Another characteristic of digitalization is known as the death of distance. The speed with which information can travel and our perception of space are intricately linked. Actually, as I put now deep down the rabbit hole, the fastest speed with which information can possibly travel in this universe, this is called the speed of flight, has a fundamental limit to our to the existence or the collapse of space. At the speed of light, space and time collapse. The guy who taught us about that, his name is Einstein. He got pretty famous with this insight, but of course we don't have any intention and in no way we can go into that. But just to tell you, deep down the rabbit hole, crazy stuff is going on. But think about it this way, uh, more, more easily to understand. Uh, before information could travel at a certain speed, we didn't even have the need for different time zones. We didn't understand space uh, divided into different time zones because at that time, nobody and no information could travel faster than the sun is going around the earth. Now, with the introduction of the train, information could suddenly travel faster than the sun goes around the earth and brutal stuff happened. For example, in 1953, we had 65 train wrecks and almost 200 deaths because trains crashed head on into each other. Why did that happen? Well, because the train company said, well, you start your journey at one o'clock over here and you start your journey at two o'clock over here. So you should pass this bridge at four o'clock and you then obviously at five, but they both got there at four o'clock crashed head into each other, and we had no idea why that happened. Well, because we didn't even understand what time zones were, because information could not travel faster for nobody. So with that came the need to establish time zones. The death of distance actually brought us together, not only in the United States, but worldwide, what historically is a blink of an eye in a very short time. In 1858, the first transatlantic cable was laid between the UK and the United States. And when Queen Victoria of England wrote the first telegraph to, to President Buchanan, it took about 10 minutes to transmit one word. That was a huge improvement to before, because before you go by ship, it took weeks to get a message from Europe to the United States. And now it only took 10 minutes. However, 10 years later, actually eight years later, you could already transmit eight words per minute. That was a huge improvement. Then 100 years later, in 1956, you could already transmit 120 words per minute, just basically through a phone conversation. 120 words per minute, that's what you usually speak. So that's what, what you hear when I speak to you. Or sometimes, as you already noticed, I speak a little faster. But on average, I should speak about 120 words per minute. And by now, the transatlantic cables that exist, they process giga and terabytes. So actually, if I would be speaking to you right now at the same speed, I'm same speed I'm speaking, 120 words per minute, and you would record these words and write them down, I would have to talk for 3,500 years without a break. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't go to the bathroom, I couldn't eat. 2,000 years, that was Jesus Christ, 3,500 years. And all these words then you could put together and send them over the transatlantic cable from Europe to the United States in one second. One, two. They would all be gone. <laughs> that's how powerful these networks nowadays are and that's how they brought the world together. Actually, the death of distance leads to very things that are, that's, that are really unusual for us. For example, when a 5.9 earthquake hit near Richmond in Virginia, residents in New York City read about the quake on Twitter feeds 30 seconds before they experienced the quake themselves. Because information in digital networks travels almost at the speed of light, and this is quicker than, for example, shock waves travel through the ground. So sometimes we are so close together that these kind of funny things can happen. The distance is not really anymore a fundamental limit to information exchange.